Okay, we're back in um, Adobe Experience Design or Adobe XD, and this is the fourth of the tutorials. Um, we've looked at other um, tutorials where we've compared different type of tools for creating UI design, certainly to do with Sketch and, and doing it in Photoshop. And then also we've had a basic introduction to using XD. Now, this uh, tutorial will focus on um, creating guides to draw with and also creating some basic shapes and um, combining those shapes to make new shapes. First of all, um, we need to choose a, an artboard to get going. We'll just choose the, say, the iPhone 5 and 6 to just get one. I'll just maximize um, my workspace. Again, I'm using um, a, an Apple Mac. Um, Adobe Experience Design is in beta. Currently, it's um, now the beginning of July 2017. And certainly, they started off the beta version on Mac first. So there might be some lags um, or some features that are not currently available in the Windows version, but I think then they're sort of catching up. And again, this is a program that's in beta, it's in development, so the functions are coming in um, as they're developing it. Okay, so first of all, um, we've got our artboard here. Just to recap, you can zoom in and out of your artboard by pressing Command plus and minus. Um, or control plus and minus if you're using um, a PC. Also, if you've got a trackpad, you can zoom in, or if you've got something like a magic mouse, you can zoom in um, using gestures with your fingers. Okay, so we've got this artboard, and it's also a good idea to name your artboard, certainly if you are keep your own sanity and be organized, but also if you're working collaboratively or if your UI designs you're creating are going to be coded up by a developer. Right, so we've named our artboard. Now, what XD currently doesn't have is rulers, and it doesn't have any draggable guides. And again, this is uh, early July 2017, and hopefully these functions will be rolled out in, in, in future updates. So what it does have is a grid. So if we look over the properties on the right, if I go down to the bottom where it says grid, it'll give me a grid. This is set up for eight pixels. Um, and what I can do is say I could take that up and make it 30 pixels. Now what you always need to do if you're doing grids is make sure certainly the grid you've matched or how it aligns. I've got half a grid here. That's not usually the case that you can always do that. Certainly if you're targeting a certain size screen, which you know, that may not what you are doing as long as the screen is proportional. Usually you're creating um, certainly SVG graphics, which are scalable in any case that you would output. Um, but what I will do is I'll just bring in my artboard so it aligns with the actual grid and I haven't got a half or a quarter grid on the end. Now, once I've created that, you know, you can change it if you want, um, but certainly you've got um, the grid here. You can make that as a default if you wish, so you can change those around. So what we will do now is I will just look at creating some shapes. Now, the shapes are in the tools, which are down the left side of the screen. If I hover my mouse over there, it's got the rectangle, or press R on your keyboard for shortcut. It's got the ellipse. It's got the line tool and press L, or it's got the pen tool and you press um, P for pen. So first of all, just get the rectangle. Again, it's got smart guides. So if I wanted to start dead center, as I hover it around, you'll see the smart guides say, hey, you're hovering over the dead center. So say if I wanted my shape, in this case, the rectangle to start from the center, be a perfect square, um, then I would hold the Alt, that makes it start from the center and hold the shift and that keeps its proportions, keeps it a perfect square. And I drag it out and I use the guides and there's my shape. Now it goes to the properties over the side. I can give it a color and then I can click here to give the uh, border a color. So I make it green. And if I click in here and then I just uh, use my up arrow key on my keyboard, it will give me uh, a border. There you go, I'm gonna use the guides and do that. I can change that border by certainly coming up here and getting a different color. Okay, so there's my shape. How would scale it? I would use it with the move tool. And again, if I wanted to scale it from its center point and keep its proportions, Alt and Shift, and I can drag it in and drag, sorry, whoops, Alt and Shift. So it does that. If I don't hold the Alt, 
it'll do that. Also, you need to realize that at the actual, um, certainly the border is saying the same size. So sometimes you make things smaller, you might have to adjust them, but a uh, number of different ways you can work around that, but that's how you would do it. And again, if I just have the shift key, it will just do it like that from the corners. I hold the alt and it will do it from the center. So that's generally how you can move around. Um, you can actually hover the mouse over one of the corners and you can turn it around like this. You'll see also up at the top, I could say 45 and it will turn it like that. So you can do it up there. You can also um, change its dimensions up here. I could type in something like um, 200 and that'll change the size or I can lock both of them. So if I unlock that, I put 200 here. Then if that was locked, if I now put um, different size in here, I could put uh, 400. It will certainly do it proportionally and make it bigger or smaller. Okay, so I'll just delete that. And the next thing I'll do is use the ellipse tool or I can press uh, E on my keyboard. And again, I'll do the same. I'll hover my mouse. I'm gonna use the guides. Alt and Shift to start from the center. I'll drag it out again use the guides I can then go over here and make it give it a border and then give it a fill on the or I can literally turn the border off and it does that okay so that's how you do the shape and again if you wanted to scale it alt and shift to do it from the, whoops uh, alt and shift in the corner like that, drag it in, drag it out, and that'll center it and keep it a perfect circle. Or I can just use the shift key and bring it in and bring it out, okay? Um, what I'll do is get rid of that. And the next tool we look at is a line tool. Line tool just does what it does. You click here, you drag down. Uh, you can hold the shift key and it does this. It does it say, um, certainly the angles or 45 degrees, so it keeps it like that if you wish if you don't hold the shift key you can just do it that's quite good again you need to use your guides to do that and we can take up the um, border on it and certainly we can come along and make it a different color so that's how you would do the line and again if you're familiar with design programs you can certainly come along and drag that in and drag it out but certainly if you hold the shift key it will constrain that movement like this and again always sort of use guides to uh, to align it up with right now another tool which may be more versatile than the line tool is the pen tool so the pen tool is you click in one place and then you click again and if I want to stop drawing I can press um, certainly escape key and I've got shape a uh, line there I can now um, make it bigger so you've got a bigger line and you can then come along it's just on the border here i can change its color again okay so what i will do is i will get the pen tool again click here uh, click down click here and then go all the way up and join it all up then i can press the escape and you'll see it highlights it all i can now give it a fill so i can turn my fill on and give it a fill there we go and also if you wanted to you can take the border up so you can draw your own shapes um, so that's that's really really good that you can you know, draw your own shapes and fill them in so you can customize those again use the guides for how you would um, draw out your shape okay um, the next thing we'll look at is combining shapes or um, from different uh, different shapes combining them or doing intersection so first of all I'll just draw um, a shape here um, I'm gonna go for a fill so I'll make it red I don't really want a border because that'll confuse things and then I'm going to just get a circle so I'll get the ellipse tool I'll draw out my circle again I'll just get a shape a color just so you can see what it is let's get a nice bright green and I'm gonna turn off the border and I'm just gonna have them to overlap so we can see what, what's gonna happen now. 
Okay, so we've got them both overlapping. I can shift click them both to select them. Now, if you look in the outline view or the layers view, layers is down the bottom here, you click on here for layers um, here. And then I just double click on the artboard and it shows me both those layers. So what I'll do is name them, as I mentioned before, make sure you name all your layers meaningfully. Um, I don't want it in, I just want it in lowercase. I'll call that green and I'll call that uh, uh, red, just for one to make sure to name them. I can shift click them both here in the layers or I can just shift click them both on the um, artboard to select them both. And what I'll do is I'll just blow, blow it up a bit there. Now what I'm gonna do, if you go over here in the properties and you go top right, it's got a number of icons here on the second row down and the first one, when you hover over, it'll say add. If I click add, it just adds, um, it takes the first object you've got and then adds the object that's on top to make one new shape. And you see here, it'll say union where it joins them together. Now what you would do is rename that completed object something more meaningful than that. I undo it again. Next one along, I click on here and this cuts it out. So basically it, it just chops it out, a bit like if you're making biscuits, cutting it out of pastry, it's chopped it out. So, so basically the object on chop, top has been used as a cutter and it's cut its way through the object on the bottom and then it's disappeared. So that might be useful for making other shapes. I'll just undo that. Now the third one is the intersection and that will just leave the bit um, between the both of them. So I click on that and that's just given me that shape. So that's quite useful. I'll undo that. And then third is this one where it's just cut this bit out here. So, you know, if I move that whole thing, you'll see it just, you know, it's cut it out. So sometimes that's certainly what you might want. So if I just undo that, so say for example, I'll just, oops, show you that. So if I move that down, put it here somewhere. Now, if I did that now and shift both of them, what that has done is just cut a hole in the middle. So you might want to have a shape there and you cut a hole in the middle if you're making a logo or something else. So you can make new shapes by combining shapes and then certainly grouping them together. So anywhere you want to do those things, you can um, quite common that you'll see making these compound objects, certainly when you're using um, paths or clipping paths, certainly things like Illustrator, um, it does the same sort of thing and it groups them all together um, here. If I double click on that, the, it creates a new layer here um, and it's still got the old objects inside it. And if I click on them, they're still there, but it's just combined them. And I can just type in new uh, shape. So always make sure you name it and that's a good uh, routine to get into. Okay, so that's just um, using grids and d using some of the basic shapes. We'll look at more um, certainly advanced uses of shapes later on and paths and beziers in a future tutorial.